All right, moving on to something a little more fun, a little more philosophically random, I guess, explaining how libertarianism applies to real-world, everyday legal solution or legal problems, challenges. A lot of libertarian solutions are ultimately based on nonviolence being better than violence. So I want you to keep that in mind as, as we look at this case that is really focused on uh, First Amendment issues, at least according to the story from DallasNews.com, sharing nude photos of current or ex-partners protected under First Amendment court rules. Is distributing intimate photos of current or previous sexual partners without their consent protected by the First Amendment? A state appeals court says yes. Now it will be up to the state attorney general's office to defend the state's revenge porn law, which was passed in 2015 and punishes those who post intimate images from previous or current relationships online. The Tyler-based 12th Court of Appeals said the law is unconstitutional because it's too broad and infringes on free speech. So the question often comes up, well, without government, how would we deal with this problem? And I, I don't think that the problem of, of revenge porn is, is really one that, that's keeping people clinging to their statism. It's not like, well, without government, how would we deal with revenge porn problems? No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too concerned about that, but as an advocate of, of a stateless society, or at least a society where the only government is voluntary, we have to be able to answer the question, how would a libertarian society deal with this? And the answer, is again always blindingly simple right now ultimately it's let the market decide so if you have an agreement with your dispute resolution organization with your insurance company who handles arbitration for you you know those kinds of issues that says you know i'm just i'm going to be a decent human being i'm not going to do this revenge porn thing and you do it then you're liable under the terms of that contract and under the terms of that agreement and I think that's really what the market is going to demand is that when someone is caught violating e even just an unstated expectation of privacy, that there is going to be some consequence. There is going to be something that they agreed to as a matter of common decency, but it's not going to warrant a violent response. And see, this is the problem with the status paradigm looking at a problem like this from, uh, you know, to, to a kid with a hammer, every problem is a nail. To someone using government to solve problems, everything warrants violent intervention, or it doesn't. And that's really the problem here. Is that, well, it does, is, it, is it protected by the First Amendment? Yeah, and I would say, yeah, that, that sharing nudes of, of a partner or an ex is, uh, is speech that, that you have a right to do with your own property. But should there be some sanction on it? And when it's the government now, hypothetically, they could say, well, we're going to figure out a way to find the violator and give it to the victim, you know, and, and, and something like that. But ultimately, it's not fair. It's not just, it's not righteous when it's being imposed by an arbitrary authority that hasn't established those guidelines. And of course, that's the whole point of government, right? Being able to do whatever they feel like, whenever they feel like it. And with this, I think the, the, what, the, what we would have from a market-based solution to the problem of revenge porn is uh, something voluntary that would be based on some kind of economic sanction and something that would involve making the victim whole rather than just being punished by the government. The court also said that the law was vague and infringed on the rights of third parties who might unwittingly share intimate images according to the Associated Press. In its ruling, the court ordered charges to be dropped against Jordan Bartlett Jones, who challenged the law as unconstitutional while awaiting trial for sharing a naked photograph of a woman without her consent. And so this gets to the, the, the improvement promised by a voluntary society in terms of dealing with these things. Like, you send someone a naked picture, and there's no uh, means of, of holding them accountable if they share. There's no way of... Uh, saying that you expect them not to share it. You just hope that you live in somewhere where there's revenge porn law so you can go after them with government, right? No, that seems like a, a terrible way of going about things. But if it becomes the social norm, the social standard, that that's just a dick move, and according to your DRO, you're not going to be a dick, or if you're a dick, you're going to be held financially accountable for whatever level of dickery you are guilty of. 
and sharing, you know, uh, uh, revenge porn, and if you want to call it that, but sharing, a, you know, an intimate picture from from a partner or an ex, is it, certainly a violation, but one that needs to be put in, in appropriate economic scale in a way that government is not even capable of doing fairly. So, the law originated from complaints from women who said they felt violated and abused when their exes posted naked or sexual images online without their consent. One woman, Holly Toops of Nederland, found dozens of photos of herself online and organized a class action suit against the website where they appeared. She said, I was kind of numb at first, and when I scrolled to the bottom, it showed how many people had viewed it. I saw that it was thousands, and with all these comments, they were saying horrible things. That's when I got scared and felt humiliated, knowing that I was, as I was looking, so were thousands of other people. So... With a, a voluntary society, with the kinds of accountability that it affords, you will also have accountability for the people who contribute in this way if they agree, if the market demands that when you sign up for an insurance company, when you sign up for a DRO, you agree to not engage in acts of public bullying. You agree not to share other people's revenge porn and, and further it. So there would be an appropriate sanction tied to that. Or maybe society doesn't care. Maybe we, we evolved so far past this that we, we are beyond humiliation, that we are so comfortable with our bodies that all of this is irrelevant. So uh, even looking at it through uh, not just the current paradigm of statism, but looking at a problem through just the lens of the current reality that is so stunted in every way imaginable by statism, uh, we are sort of looking at the problem wrong. But the ultimate conclusion, of course, is that, yes, even for revenge porn, nonviolent answers are better than violent. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions including DTube, and you can find that through steamit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at thefreedomline.com and we'll share it on my feed.